Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo on configuring the SSO Identity Server. Before we start, I would like to mention that this video will assume that you have already imported and deployed the vCloud Automation Center Identity Appliance. This should be deployed per normal vSphere deployment methods. During the deployment, you'll be prompted for the appliance's hostname, IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and DNS server, so please make sure to have this information ready. From there, we'll get into configuring the different settings within the identity server. We'll start by configuring the time servers, then move into the SSO configuration, then set the host settings, and then create an SSL certificate. All these steps are required except for adding the machine to a domain. The SSO functionality is very important in the installation of VCAC6 and should be complete before you do anything else. This lets VCAC authenticate users from Active Directory and LDAP sources and sits between that source and VCAC. If you have vCenter 5.5 patch 1, you'll be able to use the SSO version that's delivered with vCenter rather than deploying a separate identity server. From a logical standpoint, the users authenticate through the identity appliance, which checks the credentials against the directory service and allows them into VCAC. Then, depending on their roles and permissions, they're allowed into other tools within VCAC, like anything as a service, infrastructure as a service, and IT business management. Something very important to note is that all of the system times on all of these servers need to be the same. If there's more than a two minute difference on any of these systems, the authentication process will fail. In order to reach the identity server for configuration, navigate to https colon slash slash the IP of the machine and then port 5480. From there, access the configuration site by entering root for the username and the password you supplied when deploying the appliance. As making sure that times are synced on all servers is a step that is often forgotten, I like to do this step first. It's very important that all servers used for VCAC be set to the same time through a central time server. Again, if the times between the servers are more than two minutes apart, the authentication will fail. To set the time server, navigate to the admin tab and click the time setting sub tab. In the drop down, select use time server and enter the time server within your network. Once done, press Save Settings. Confirm that the current time on the page is correct. You may now want to consider logging out and logging back in, because if there was a time change, you will see an authentication error later which will force you out of the system and require you to re-log in. Move into the SSO tab. The SSO sub tab will appear by default. Enter a password and then confirm it. This username and password will be used later on when configuring VCAC, so please make sure to remember it. The associated administrator account will be administrator at vSphere.local. Press apply. In the host settings sub tab, enter a fully qualified domain name into the SSO host field name. This should be the fully qualified domain name that your DNS server has associated to the IP address you provide the appliance. If you have not already done so, it's very important that the DNS records are inserted and correct. Make sure to specify the port number 7444 and press apply. Follow into the next subtab, SSL. From the Choose Action dropdown, select either Generate Self-Signed Certificate or Import PEM Encoded Certificate. If creating a self-signed certificate, Fill in the common name with the server's fully qualified domain name, organization, organizational unit, and country code. Press the Replace Certificate button. Note that if this is not the first time that you have generated a certificate, as in you're fixing an error or creating a new certificate, you'll need to reboot the server for the new certificate to go into effect. As an optional setting, you can go to the Active Directory subtab and join the machine to a domain by entering the domain name, a user, and password. From there, press the Join AD Domain button. Our final step is to go to the Network tab to confirm your network settings. Simply confirm that all these settings look correct. 
If there's something you'd like to change, you can do so in the Address sub-tab. If all looks correct, you can log out from the Identity Plans configuration page. There are often questions about how to make it so that the identity server is not a single point of failure when implemented into a production environment. Because the identity server has only one vCPU, we're able to use vCenter's fault tolerance capability to ensure that the service is always available. This capability creates a live copy of the VM and keeps the two machines' memory in sync, ensuring that if there's an issue, that a new, fully up-to-date VM is there to take the original machine's place. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and we hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, please refer to the additional videos available.